So we're going to take a little tour of the immunotherapy I'm going to be starting tomorrow. It's called Keytruda, and this is what it's all about. Hey everyone, Todd here, internalarchitect.com, and I wanted to go over the immunotherapy I'm going to be starting tomorrow. The, it is called Keytruda, and it is essentially a checkpoint inhibitor. Now, what does that mean? It's a, a way to undisguise cancer in my body so that my immune system will start to fight it on its own. Now, <clears throat> checkpoint inhibitors are kind of interesting. A lot of this stuff all comes down to biology. And in a lot of the testing and everything that goes on and the work that, and the money that, is, that, that helps fund all of this research, this is some of the the therapies that are coming to light because of all the money that is being spent. Immunotherapy is some of the newest ways to be able to fight a lot of different other cancers, not just lymphoma, but it has had a pretty high success rate when it comes to to what it is able to do and how it is how it works. Keytruda it, this immunotherapy called Keytruda starts off by helping unmask cancer cells. Now, how does it do that? It does that by working with a protein or two proteins actually that work within our cells and cancer cells are known to have this PD-1 protein and PD-L1 protein also. And for whatever reason, lymphoma, and especially in Hodgkin's, classical Hodgkin's, really takes on this extra protein and that's how it's able to mask itself from my immune system. Now, this PDL1, it is a it comes from the T cells within our own bodies. That's how it's able to mask itself and grow and unobstructed and not have our immune system work in fighting it. So, this checkpoint inhibitor is able to take the other protein, this PDL1, and help unmask it essentially. And and there's a lot more to it and to be 100% honest with you, I don't understand every single aspect of it, but that's what it does. It's able to take the proteins together and unmask the cancer cells so that my immune system can fight it. Now there's um, the, the odds of this, the, the, the clinical trials that have come back are pretty good. There's a 69% chance of how patients have responded to the therapy and they have either had a complete or partial response to this. 47% of the patients have had a partial response and 22% of the patients have had complete response. So those odds are pretty good. And at this point, the lymphoma in my body as of recording is really, really minimal, which is good. So I feel like I have a pretty good chance of this working really well for me. And I'm really kind of curious to see how, kind of what the, uh, the side effects are. And the side effects, I mean, there's, there's a gamut of side effects that can come with this. But just like any sort of drug that you take, there's always going to be you know, the potential of side effects that come along with taking any drug. At this point where I'm at, I think the benefits far outweigh the negatives. And some of the side effects I'm looking at are like, I have long, the, the possibility of some lung problems, you know, shortness of breath, chest pain. There's potential for intestinal problems like colitis and you know, diarrhea or more bowel movements than normal. You know, they say on here that there's, you know, your stools might be black, tarry, sticky, or whatever, and then severe stomach and, and uh, abdomen pain and tenderness also, which is, that's not very awesome, but... You know, there's liver problems, including hepatitis, that could come from this also. It goes through a whole gamut of that. Potential hormone issues that can come along with that. Kidney problems, skin problems. I mean, there's, there's just a lot of different things that can come along with taking this also. So these are all things. I'm actually reading up on all these because I want to be aware if there's any sudden changes that happen from where I'm at now. Because I'm in a pretty good place right now physically. I've been riding my bike a lot. I've been really active, so I'm feeling pretty strong. And I've figured out a lot of the little intricacies of what my issues have been. So being able to inform myself about all the different possibilities of things will help me really get a, a quicker hold on 
what might be happening and why. So, you know, there's there's a lot that goes on there. And that's why I wanted to really make sure that I understand what Keytruda is and how it's going to not only help me, but potentially hurt me too. So it's a, it's going to be a long process. It's looking like I, I'm going to do this every three weeks. An infusion is, I, it is an infusion. It'll be every three weeks. And I'll be doing this for approximately three months and probably in the middle and during this whole time I will start the physical testing for my allergenic transplant also. So there's uh, that's the gist of what it is. This this immune and, and I, again I'll do an update on the Keytruda as I get a little bit further into it and see how I feel and everything else. From, from what I understand it is a lot better tolerated than chemotherapy which I'm absolutely feeling blessed about right now because I hate chemotherapy and it's just uh, it's a brutal road to go down. There's also some potential trials that I could get into down the road before transplant also but I think the goal is just to kind of get my body back in remission and then prep for an allergenic transplant. So if you have any questions please hit me in the comment section below and hit subscribe down in that corner. Uh, to let you know when I put out a new video and to follow along with this journey because I, it's been a very interesting one and it's been ongoing for 10 years at this point. So to help you and help others that you know, you know, get a grasp of not only what they're going through, but to also what kind of survivorship they can expect af after they beat cancer. So awesome. I appreciate you guys for watching. I appreciate your time and energy. And yeah, I will see you on the next video.